Hi everyone! In this video, we're going to construct a box plot based on a given uh, data set. And here we have the 2013 tuitions in dollars of 10 randomly selected two year public colleges. Okay, here they are. We start by listing the values from smallest to largest. Okay, here they are. Next, we'll need to find quartiles. Remember, when we're constructing a box plot, we use values that we call Q1, Q2, and Q3 quartiles. Well, we're going to now find them all, but in a special order. So we're always going to start, and we'll write it as step one, with Q2. So find Q2 because it's the same as the median. And we know how to find median, right? So we have to find either the middle value or the middle two values of our data set. So if I check what happens here in the middle, well, I mean, since I have 10 values, I, I knew what um, would happen. Um, I don't have the middle one, I have the middle two. So I will use the middle two values to, uh, to find the median. And that is adding those two values together and dividing by two. I got 2,952. And I want to like emphasize where exactly it's located or positioned in my data set. Well, it's right here, right in the middle between 2904 and 3000, right? So Q2, which is same as the median, is 2952. And Q2 or median splits the entire data set in two parts. So it's basically at the bottom 50% of the data set and the top. 50% of the data set. This is bottom 50%. Okay, before I move on, I need to write down here that Q2 is 2950. Okay, yeah, now let's move on. Now in step two, we'll need to find Q1. Um, we'll just go in order, it doesn't matter at this point. So find Q1. How do we find Q1? Remember that Q1 separates the first 25% from the entire data set. So Q1 is going to be right in the middle of the bottom 50% of my data set. So long story short, what I need to do is to take the bottom 50% of the data set and find its median. So here I have one, two, three, four, five values, um, the odd number of values. So the one that's right in the middle is going to be Q1. So Q1 equals 2640. And it's going to be the same idea for finding Q3. Find Q3. For that, we have to look at the top 50% of the data set and find its median. So it's going to be right in the middle. Since I have odd number, the odd number of values here, it's going to be right in the middle. If I had even number of values, then I would have to take the middle two and find their average, you know, same way as I did for Q2. So in this case, Q3 is 3780. So I'll record it here. Okay, so that's how you find Q1, Q2, and Q3. Start with the median with Q2. Next, we're going to calculate the IQR. Remember, IQR, that's something that helps us to identify outliers. So we need to check if this data set has any outliers. So IQR, the interquartile range, is the difference between Q3 and Q1. Well, we have those from the previous step, so we'll have to take... 3,780 and subtract 2,640 and that is 1,140. And now here's that question about outliers. Are there any outliers? Well, for that we need to find left and right fences. So remember to find the left fence. We start at Q1 and subtract 1.5, it's always that number in the formula, times IQR. So what is Q1? Q1 is 2640, that's the number I got. 
minus 1.5 that number is always always there but i have to multiply it by the iqr that i have for this example 1140 okay so if i do that math i'm gonna get 930 so what does that mean it means that this is like this special value that allows me to identify outliers and since it's the left hand so i'm gonna say or I'm going to ask myself, do I have any values in my data set that are below the 930 or less than 930? Let's check. Well, no, the smallest value I have is 1111. So I don't have anything below 930. So that means that I will not have any outliers on the left. So there are no extremely small values in the data set. How about the right fence? that I have to take Q3 and now add 1.5 times IQR. So that's 3780 plus 1.5 times 1140. And that gives me 5490. So that's the value for the right fence. We're not going to place those on the box plot, but we're going to use it to identify any outliers on the right hand side, any extremely large values. Let's check. Do I have any values in the data set? They're more than 5490. Oh, I do right here. 6800, right? See how it's larger than that right fence? Well, that means that that's going to be an outlier. And I'll say, See step, step four. Okay, so let's uh, make a note of that. Yes, um, there is an outlier. It's sixty-eight hundred dollars in this case. Yes, there is an outlier, and it's sixty-eight hundred dollars. It's greater than the right fence, and that means that this tuition fee of sixty-eight hundred dollars is much larger for the data set than the rest of the values or the rest of the tuition fees. Okay, so now once we identified everything that we needed, we're gonna construct a box plot itself. So we always start by constructing a number line. So box plot is kind of like sitting on the number line. And that number line of course should correspond to our data set. So it should have units and we use numbers appropriately to our data set. So if the smallest um, value is 1100 and then the largest here is 6800 that I'll have to show on the box plot. Um, I'll say I'll have to go from 1000 to 7000 on the number line. So that's how I'm going to label it. And I would also need to denote the units. So these are dollars. Okay, so let's start. Um, we're going to start by constructing a box itself. And, and as you remember, it goes from Q1 to Q3. So Q1 is at 2640. Q3 is at 3780. So 2640 is about over here. And 3780, it's almost 3800, I would say somewhere here. So here's the box. Again, for myself, I'm going to denote that it's Q1 and this is Q3, but technically you don't have to label them on the box plot. And now within the box, I have to denote where the median is, which is Q2. So we found that median is 2950, well, almost 3000. So that means that I'll have to place it here. That's Q2. And then I need to draw whiskers. So since we don't have any outliers on the left, the whisker will stretch down to the minimum value from the original data set, which is 1111. So I would say down here. So that's the minimum value from the original data set. Next, let's construct a whisker on the right hand side. Now, remember that we do have an outlier 6800 and we actually have to also denote it um, on the box plot. Let's just do it right away. So 6800, I'm going to put a dot for the outlier. So that is the outlier. 
And that means that the right hand side whisker will not be extended to this value, but the one that comes before it. So in my data set, I'm not gonna use the outlier, but use um, the number that comes before 4511, the one that stays within the fence, 4511. Remember, here's the right hand side fence. So 54, oh, I'm sorry, 4511. 4511 is probably somewhere over here. So that's gonna be the right hand side whisker. So I added a note that this is the maximum value that's not an outlier. And basically the box plot itself, okay, well, it's completed now. The box plot itself is only what I have in the red. Well, and of course the number line. So all those are just extra notes for myself. And let's finish by stating the five number summary of the set. So five number summary is just five numbers, but each has a meaning. So those numbers are minimum value. So in our data set, it's 1,111. That's the minimum value. Next. Next, we need to um, write down Q1. And that is, let me see, Q1, 2640. 2640. That would be Q1. Um, next one is Q2, 29. 50, Q2 or median, Q2 or median, and then uh, next one is Q3, 3780, and then the maximum value, but again, the one that's not an outlier, so that's 4511, maximum value, not an outlier. So these are the steps that you take for constructing a box plot.